our teams embarked on a bold journey, starting with Photoshop, to unlock frictionless creative collaboration. Get ready, folks. You are in good hands with the one and only Terry White, who, by the way, just celebrated 25 years helping the creative community learn how to use our product. Congrats. Thanks, Scott. I'm really excited. I can't wait to show this. Let's get to it. Photoshop is a great tool for graphic designers and photographers and just about everyone. But what makes it even better now is I can send my Photoshop files out to my stakeholders for review, for markup, for comments. With the new Share To panel, I can just go ahead and click right here in Photoshop in the upper right corner and I can get a public link. This way I can share it via email, Slack, social media, direct message, however I want. Now if I head over to my web browser, you'll notice that the link loads in the browser. This is exactly what my clients would get. So they get the ability to see the information about the document, but best of all, they get a comments panel where they can go in and leave their comments. So for example, I can say, looks good. But if they want to get very specific, they can click on the pen tool. I can click right on the astronaut's face shield and I can say something like remove the reflections. Now, what if they need to do more than just dropping a pen? They want to illustrate something. So here's an actual pen tool and they can draw right on the canvas. Flip over. Okay, these comments have been left and they're tied and associated with the cloud document. That means they travel with the cloud document anywhere that it goes, whether it's Photoshop on desktop or even Photoshop on iPad. I can click right on the brand new comments panel. I'll see those comments come right in as they just did. So I can see not only the comment, but I actually see the markup right on the Photoshop document, which is awesome. But what if I actually need to share this file with someone who needs to work on it? I need to share it with another retoucher or another designer. Well, if I go back to the share to menu, you'll notice that I have the option to also share this via email. So I can key in the person's email address, send it to them and be very specific with the kind of link that they're going to get. And it will load into the same view that you saw before for the reviewers, but you'll notice in the upper right hand corner, I've got a choice for open in. And I'm very happy for the first time to give you a look at Photoshop web beta. This is an extension of Photoshop that allows users to do reviews, markup and quick edits on the fly in the browser. So we can see some familiar tools on the left hand side, especially if you've used Photoshop on the iPad. I see my cloud document front and center ready to go. I see all my layers on the right hand side and I still have the comments panel. So as I click on or hover over the various comments, we can actually see them on the canvas. Now again, this is for doing quick edits. So let's get to it. I'll go ahead and move our astronaut over. Let's go ahead and pick her up. Let's move her over a little bit and to address one of those comments, I'm going to do a little bit of a scale proportionally, of course, and let's do a flip over and I want to remove those reflections. So I'll grab my content aware spot healing brush and I need to make my brush bigger and without thinking about it, I just use my bracket keys just like I would in Photoshop on desktop. So we'll go ahead and remove those reflections quickly and easily. And again, this is great for doing these kind of quick edits. Next up, I'm going to grab my quick selection tool and let's go ahead and make a quick selection of the face shield because I want to add a little bit of color to it. So we'll use our hue and saturation adjustment layer and that way it's non-destructive and I can make my adjustments just like that. Now, again, all of these adjustments, everything I'm doing, all the layers I'm affecting are being saved as a cloud document. And best of all, if I need to do more, I can always open this in Photoshop on the desktop to get access to all the power of Photoshop, all my tools, all my filters, everything I would ever need. So that was a quick look at Photoshop on the web. I'm really excited to show you some of my favorite new features in Photoshop. Let's get started. Making selections is a big part of using Photoshop. And you might go back to the days of using the magic wand tool where you click and it selects based on colors. Last year, we introduced the amazing object selection tool. And this year, we're making it even better. So if I take the object selection tool and you drag around an object, it will just basically make that selection for you. However, you'll notice that when I deselect and I just simply hover over the objects, it identifies them. And all I have to do is simply click. If I want to add to that selection, I can hold down the shift key and click. And if I want to subtract from that selection, if I hold down my option or alt key, for example, I can subtract the flame. Now that I got the flame subtracted, the next thing that I want to do 
is adjust the color of these candles. So I'll head over to my layers panel where I've got the ability to add a hue and saturation adjustment layer like that. Now that's great, but wait, there's more. If I go to the original background and I right click, I get a new option called mask all objects. So when I click on that, it will calculate and figure out all the objects in the scene as if I'd gone through them one by one with the object selection tool and clicked on them. And it generates all these masks for me in the layers panel, saving me time. And that's gonna be a great addition for any Photoshop user, the new auto masking in the object selection tool. Next up, let's head over to one of my near and dear favorites for people that work with Illustrator. I've got an empty canvas here and I've got an Illustrator file created by artist Victoria Pavlov. And you'll notice that she made lots of layers in this file. So I'll just drag my selection tool around everything and I'll just do a copy. Now when I head over to Photoshop and I do a paste, I get something new. I get the option to bring it in as layers. So when I click OK, it brings over all my layers from Illustrator. Nicely organized in layer groups. And if I go to, for example, the vase layer, and I go to my direct selection tool here in Photoshop and double click, I even get the ability to edit the vector shapes that it creates. So I don't have to go back to Illustrator to do it. So that's the new interoperability between Illustrator and Photoshop, which would be great for anyone doing design work between the two. Now, last year we made a big deal about AI-based neural filters. And this year we're taking it up a notch with not only new filters, but improvements as well. I've got this landscape that's kind of barren in the foreground. I wish it were a little more green. So if I go to my neural filters, I've got a new neural filter called Landscape Mixer. And when I click on Landscape Mixer, it gives me choices. I can use one of the preset photos, great. I can click on custom and use one of my own photos. And I even have season sliders at the bottom. So I see a nice green photo in the presets. I'll just click on it and it takes my photo and calculates and adds all that greenery into it. And that's great. But wait a minute, it's fall. I don't need it to be this summer look. Well, now I can just drag autumn over I would say in the 30 to 40% range, and it will calculate what's there and give me those fall colors on my scene. All right, next up, my personal favorite, my mom and dad. <laughs> A black and white picture, an old picture of my mom and dad, and I would love to colorize this. I've spent hours, weeks, months colorizing old photos before. Well, now if I go to neural filters, I get the option to choose the new improved colorized neural filter which figures out skin tones. It's better for portraits now than it ever was. So just with one click, I get a great head start to my colorization process, or it might even be the final result. Either way, I've got a layer to continue working on if I wanna do more. Now, Colorize isn't just for people, it also works great for landscapes. If I go into this landscape, for example, and I go to my filter menu, come down to Neural Filters, and go to Colorize, it will, again, identify everything in the scene and apply colors to it. But in this case, it guessed a little wrong in the sky. I don't like that brown color in the sky. So all I have to do is use the new feature in the right-hand corner for focal points, and I can click in the sky, and up comes a color panel, allowing me to choose what color that area of the sky should be. So I just choose the color that I want, and it instantly changes the sky to that color. And those are just a few of my favorite features in Photoshop. Be sure to check out my breakout session where I go through a lot more. Cheers, everyone.